Okay, our ne next up is county judge candidates, J.D. Clark and Chad Miller. I don't have enough hands. Here it is. How are you? Good. All right. Same rules. Um, we have a one-minute intro, and then we're going to have one minute to all the uh, answers to all the questions. You each get a minute rebuttal for each question, and then two minutes to close. We'll start with Mr. Miller. One-minute introduction. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Connie. Thank you for everyone who put this together, and thank you to all of you for showing up tonight. For those of y'all who don't know me, I've been blessed to be married to my wife, Heather, for 23 years. We've been blessed by God with three amazing children, all teenagers in Decatur ISD. Uh, I've been in business for 25 years, and while I've always been politically informed and engaged, I never thought I would actually run for office. And then 2020 happened, and that is when Greg Abbott shut down our state, exchanging our liberties for tyranny, mandating masks, and closing businesses, schools, and even churches, paving the way for where we are right now with the vaccine mandates. That's when I realized I had to run because in, this, in the state of Texas, the county judge has the authority to stop that, but J.D. Clark extended those for 12 months, and I knew I had to run because I knew I would stand up for the people of Wise County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clark. Well, good evening. First of all, thank you to the organizers for this opportunity, and thank you to all of you who have taken time on a frigidly cold Texas night to be out here. My name is J.D. Clark. I am your county judge. My wife Leah and I were both born and raised in Wise County. Our families are five and six generations deep here. And now we're raising our three little girls here. Claire's five, Maggie and Zelda are three-year-old twins. So Wise County is our family's past, present, and future. And that's why I do what I do. I'm focused on our office mission statement, honoring our past, building our future. That means we're investing in infrastructure, we're investing in public safety, we're making sure that this growth is good, smart, and responsible, but at the same time, we're shining a spotlight on our local history. We're preserving that local history and making sure that as we grow, we don't lose track of where our communities come from and who we are, and that's why I'm a county judge. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and stay standing. All right. Um, this is from the Wise County Republican Party. The purpose of a declaration of emergency should be to give the authority to government to deploy resources that may not have been budgeted to protect the citizens. Will you pledge to never issue a mandate that infringes on our God-given freedoms, such as declaring what business is essential, shutting down churches, mask wearing, etc.? Absolutely. We will not do that. We didn't do that locally. We won't do that here. We didn't do a mask mandate. We didn't shut down churches locally, and we're not going to do it. It doesn't work. You look at the places that have been the most heavily shut down in the world, they don't have any better COVID numbers than any of us that are open. It doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank Miller? you. Uh, could you repeat that, that last yeah, part again? Absolutely. Uh, see, the, de the purpose of the declaration of emergency should be to give the authority to government to deploy resources that may not have been budgeted to protect yeah. the citizens. Well, thank you, Connie. Uh, okay. I got it now. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, like I said in my opening statement, that's exactly why I, I started to run, because as soon as that happened, I knew they had violated the Constitution. Fifteen days, fine. But whenever it extended for a year, and he extended those disaster declarations for a year, it got all over me because it was a violation of our liberties. And there were businesses that were closed in Wise County. There were businesses that their occupancy was limited and the mask mandates were in place. Not all the business owners knew that they could use their own discretion because they weren't told that. There were plenty of businesses that had their, their finances seriously affected because of the mandates that went through. I'm glad that you said that you won't do that again, but the key word is again, because it did happen in Wise County for a year, and it will never happen if I'm your county judge, ever. Thank you, and your rebuttal. Thank you, two quick things. A disaster declaration and an emergency executive mandate are two different things. As the question alluded, those disaster declarations are to allow you to do different procurement processes. As a county government, we have certain procurement processes that we typically have to follow. 
under a disaster declaration, we can step past those and move faster to acquire things quickly when we find them, like cleaning products, PPE for our first responders, things we were having trouble doing. And so extending a disaster declaration to be able to access those resources is very different than putting a mask mandate in place. Thank you. See, this is where I think that speaking the truth in a world full of lies matters at all levels, all right? Because if you issue an emergency declaration, that tells the people something. That tells the people of Wise County that our leadership declares an emergency for political gain, for money, but that's what led us to where we are because we continue to, to prolong the emergency and when there was not an emergency. And that's exactly why I believe that whenever we as leaders speak, our actions have consequences. And we can't sell our souls for financial gain just so we can get PPE for the office. Thanks. So, Mr. Miller, uh, this is from Wise, Wise County Conservatives. Wise County Conservatives. The date is June 2020. As the Wise, uh, as the Wise County judge... What should you or would you have done differently in Wise County on behalf of the citizens and business owners? I think you kind of answered it, but... What was the date? Uh, June 2020. Well, we, I mean, we See, can go was... up to June. But we can go all the way back to March whenever this originally started. It's like, look, the 15 days, we all panicked. We all were, were freaking out. I think everybody was because we have kids. We didn't know what was going on. But by June, we knew. The evidence was in. In April, I knew. We knew who the at-risk group was. And so what I would have done, plain and simple, was told the people of Wise County the truth. I would have given you the statistics. This is the at-risk population. This is what the, the actual science says on the efficacy of masks. And in Wise County, you don't have to follow any of these CDC guidelines that are capricious, arbitrary, and not based on science. So I would have stood up, and it would have been business as usual in Wise County, and we would have been the voice for the rest of Texas because I would have called the governor as well, and it would not have happened here. I would have censured him immediately. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. June 2020. Let's not go back. Let's not go yeah, back to yeah. 2020. How about that? Doesn't that Agreed. sound good? So June 2020 in Wise County, I think that we would have done a lot of things that we did right. We'd do again. We did share the facts. We shared the data as we had it. When data didn't make sense, we questioned that. We are on the Metroplex News, myself, the Collin County Judge, and the Rockwall County Judge, saying these numbers that we're getting are not making sense. They're not what we're seeing from our local providers. There are some issues here with data. We didn't enforce capacity on any restaurants. That was often the teeth in those executive orders that would come down and say, well, local law enforcement can enforce those. No, we didn't do that. We weren't going to tie up our county resources doing that. We didn't enforce any mask mandates. We didn't go tell somebody you can't be open or we think you're at 76% capacity instead of 75. It makes no difference. We didn't participate in it. We wouldn't do it now. Thank you. Rebuttal? If we didn't participate in it, then why did we participate in it? Because I saw it everywhere I went. Yes, some businesses took that decision upon themselves, but there are business owners in here who did not get the memo. They didn't know. They weren't told. And that's, again, why I say we have to make sure that the people in the community know what the facts are. And the evidence was in well before June. And we needed to share that with the business owners, with the individuals who live in Wise County to know, with the schools. Go to the school boards. Tell them. Talk to the superintendents. Tell them. But, again, the main thing is you need to take it to Governor Abbott. So I didn't know of any action that was taken against Governor Abbott because he was the one who ultimately was the one who was put locking us down along with our Attorney General. So that's what it needed to happen. We needed to be on the stage letting the leadership know that this is unacceptable in Wise County. Any rebuttal? Sure, just quickly. So a couple things is one of the very first things I did in March of 2020 was formed an economic impact task force and invited any business owners that wanted to be part of it to be part of it so we could exchange information, talk about what your experience and what's working, what do we need to do differently. Some took advantage of that and participated in that were fantastic. Some weren't. Our county government was more socially active on social media, sharing information, sharing what our thoughts were, catching flack both ways one way or another than we've ever been. And we continue to do that, and we did that the right way. 
And we did, the commissioner's court did correspond with Governor Abbott, and that was all public. That was in the paper. That was on Facebook. We sent letters from the commissioner's court when it seemed like everybody could, could be open again except hairstylists. We said that makes no sense. These hairstylists are professionals. They're trained in safety protocols. They can safely operate. And we pushed back on the bars being closed, where magically if you serve food, you're safe, but if you don't have food, you're a bar, stay closed. <laughs> we sent letters on that. It didn't make sense, and we pushed back. Thank you. Good. Oh, Stay. Uh, all right. The next question from Wise Republican Women. In regard to the impactful and tremendous growth Wise County has had and will continue to have over the next several years, what measures will you, as county judge, put in place to ensure Wise County is truly prepared? Good question. So, as Mr. Hopper alluded to earlier, a lot of the growth is in the unincorporated part of the county. Unincorporated part of the county is very different from in the city limits, which has a lot of ordinance-making authority, can set a lot of building codes, things like that. We don't have those authorities in unincorporated county, but we do get to set rules and regulations on platting, on the actual dividing up of land. We get to set rules and regulations on the types of roads or bridges you build in those developments. We get to do a few things like that. And so we are continually updating our subdivision rules and regulations to make sure that they're smart, responsible growth to make sure that if a housing developer is coming in next door to you, he's not pushing drainage off next to you. Does it happen sometimes? Yes, but we put teeth in place to hold those developers accountable. We work on our county roads and make sure that what was once a two-lane county road can keep up with the growth. And we work with TxDOT and advocate to TxDOT for our priority TxDOT projects because that's where we feel a lot of the pinch too is on the highways. We can't work on those, but we can push TxDOT, and it's working. They've got 730 on the docket for this year. They've got 287 on the docket. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Yeah, and the growth is coming, and it's, it's already here. I live in the southern part of the county where it's actually expanding into. So I think the main thing that we have to focus on is, yes, we have to make sure that the infrastructure is here. We have to encourage businesses to come here. But the pe reason that people move to Wise County is because of the culture of Wise County. And that's what's so important about, about our county, is that we need to make sure that we protect and preserve that culture in Wise County. And, and a big part of that is no one wants to move to a county where they're falling off the roads, right? And so getting the infrastructure in place is absolutely crucial, right? Now, I'm, not, I'm gonna be honest, and, and he knows this, he's very experienced on the business side of being a county judge and what that takes. So that's why part of my plan is I'm gonna quit my job in October and I'm gonna spend three months under his tutelage and learn a lot of the business side. I mean that. And I think that as much love as he has for the county, he'd wanna leave it in good hands. So there's things that I've gotta learn on the business side, no doubt about that. Thank you. Um, a rebuttal, any rebuttal? No, okay. Uh, Mr. Miller, uh, I think that's right, yeah. This is from Concerned Women for America. Our First and Second Amendment rights are under attack. What can and will you do to ensure that Wise County residents' rights are protected? So, so again, the first, the first Amendment is the freedom of speech, and that is ultimately, the freedom of speech is the freedom of thought. So when the left and the radical left is what they're doing is trying to compel our speech, that's all about controlling our thoughts. And we see that with the transgender agenda in our schools, mm -hmm. pronouns, forcing you to say, call someone by either the, uh, a pronoun that they are not, he or she, but now they're even making up words. They, them, z, zer. This is happening right now. And what I've been doing, preparing for this, is I'm going to the school boards and I'm letting them know this is happening. Mr. Dr. Stuckey's correct. And, and for you running for school board, that's exactly right. The future, the future of our county is in our schools. And that's where the First Amendment is, is under attack first and foremost. But our Second Amendment is there just in case the First Amendment, if, in case they encroach <laughs> on it. Thank you. Thank you. So Texas County government is set up in an interesting way. It can sometimes be a frustrating way, mm -hmm. but it exists for a good reason. It's a system of checks and balances. No county elected official is the boss of another county elected official. We answer directly to the voters. That's who can hire and fire us. But you think about the commissioner's court. I'm the fifth member of the commissioner's court, and then there's four precinct commissioners. The biggest stick we have in the county government is that the commissioner's court controls the budget. 
That's the resources. That's where the money goes. And so from a county government perspective, how do we ensure that there are not governmental entities infringing on your rights? What can we do? There will not be any local resources dedicated, budgeted, allocated, or sent to mm. any agency entity that's using county resources to infringe on your rights. Thank you. Rebuttal? Yeah, and I think what it really comes down to is if and when they do want to infringe on your rights, and we say, well, we're not going to dedicate resources to it, then what? Because this world is changing. We all know it. Past 22 months is one thing, but it's, it's radically different than it used to be. So we have to be prepared if they come in to Wise County. What are we going to actually do? And I'm talking about actually sending troops. It's one thing for us to not fund them, but it's another thing if the troops actually come in. I'm not necessarily talking about the federal troops, but we have to be prepared for this because we, the, the line is in the sand and things are much different, and we've got to be prepared to stand at the county line and tell them that's not going to happen here. It's one thing to not dedicate funds to it. That is important. But we have to be prepared and work with the sheriff for what if it actually comes here and they want to arrest people for standing up for their own freedoms. Thank you. And really, there's a lot of hypotheticals we could play out. What would we do if they did this? What would we do if they did this? I'll say I work with a great team of elected officials and department heads and we would all be on the same page. And my first call, if we're talking about somebody coming in, troops coming in to infringe on our rights, my first call is going to be to Sheriff Lane Aiken. If you don't know Sheriff Lane Aiken, he's in the back row. He's going to be upset I'm talking about him. My friend Alan Williamson has a great saying about Sheriff Aiken. If the Taliban came around the corner right now and I was sitting next to Lane Aiken, I know he'd have it handled. And so <laughs> we've got good people in place in this county government, and I have great faith in this community to be strong. Okay, Mr. Clark, stay standing. Patri this is from Patriot Society of Boyd. Our EMS services are stretched very thin. Since the builders, developers, are reaping the benefits of huge growth in Wise County, do you feel they should appropriate funds to assist the county with improving these services, i.e. staff, facilities, etc.? Yes, we often do not have authority as a county government to require that. That's not one of our authorities that we're given. We do have a lot of conscientious developers who are willing to do that with us, and we're seeing that with some of the larger developments coming in because also, let's be honest, it's a selling point for them too in that community if they can talk about we've got an EMS substation here. And so we are in conversations with a large developer that's interested. They've uh, Part of their development set up where they can provide emergency services and so they can help fund police in that area. They can help fund ambulance service in that area. So, yes, it's possible. Yes, it's something we're interested in. It's all about relationships and communicating with those builders, laying out expectations and what the impact's going to be on our services. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Yeah, I think that the, the developers coming in, that's, that's a key because that's going to be a key revenue stream for us, and we've got to make sure that the, that the systems are in place to collect and that whenever they're building up, up according to code, that when they're coming in, we're not footing the bill for things that are clearly their responsibility. So, or, or let's say if they're coming in and they're building a development and they want to have a plumbing line come there, we, we've got to get all the infrastructure to them. But if they don't have skin in the game and they don't sell enough homes and that development falls flat, what happens? What happens when you develop that infrastructure to get to them and they're out, but you didn't have any, they didn't have any skin in the game up front? So one, we've got to make sure that the mechanisms are in place to get the finances. But absolutely, whatever we can get on that from the revenue side, EMS, however we can fund that, that's, that's an imperative part of it. But we've got to make sure that they've got skin in the game up front when they come into the community. Thank you, and they do, because we don't build infrastructure like that for housing developments. We don't run plumbing for housing developments. We work on roads and bridges with developers if they're building on a county road. But if they're building road infrastructure within their development, we tell them the standard to which that road is to be built, and they pay for it. They foot the bill. And if they want it to be entered into a county maintenance system at the end of it, it's got to be built to county specs, meet county inspection, do a two-year maintenance bond, and then it can become a county road. Thank you. All right. We are down to our two-minute closing. Uh, Mr. Miller, if you would please. Thank you. Well, thank you again. Uh, as county judge, I'm confident I can handle the business side. I'm confident I can be a good ambassador, forming relationships, 
and encouraging the growth that we need in Wise County. That's a very important part of the county judge's role. But the, the most important part of the county judge's role is to lead. And we both agree that we need to preserve the culture in Wise County. But if you're going to preserve something, that means you have to be willing to protect it. And to protect something means you have to protect it from something that is attacking it. And that starts with the local leader, the Wise County judge. And right now, we're seeing it. The, the, our, our liberties are under attack. And let's take, for instance, the COVID shutdowns. When those happened, we didn't see the kind of leadership that, that we should have seen, in my opinion. They, they infringed on our rights, and Greg Abbott should have been held accountable for that. Now, here's my question. If we didn't stand up whenever that happened, what if they do come take our guns? We've got to be able to have leadership that will stand up for us. That's what, like in the, in the schools. That's why I've been addressing the transgender agenda in the schools. Because what if your child decides they're another gender and you get your rights taken away as a parent? That's happening in Texas right now. But we need leadership because we need to lead with our voice. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna do is lead with my voice and proclaim the truth about all of this stuff that's going on. Because if we don't do that, we're going to lose our culture, right? The vaccine mandates. Right now, 59% of Democrats want to mandate people stay at home. 45% want the unvaccinated to be pushed into camps. I mean, that's what, that's what we're coming to. And I'm telling you right now, if that happens in Wise County, I'll stand at the county line along with Sheriff Aiken, and they'll know that that's not coming to Wise County. Because when I say that the L stands for liberty, I mean it with Thank everything you. in me. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Two minutes. You know, the most important and valuable work I do is love my family and raise my little girls. And even tonight while I'm up here and, and, and trying to answer questions in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking about, what time am I going to get home? Is anybody going to still be awake? Am I going to get to help tuck anybody in tonight? Because that's the best part, and that's the most important thing we're doing. And it's those three little girls. That's why I'm working in this community, because I worry about what, what is their community going to be like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and we're working on things that affect that now. Because we could argue all night over whether or not growth is good or bad. There's a lot of pros and cons to growth, but the fact is the growth is happening. The growth is going to continue. So instead, the conversation that we're having at the county level and with our city partners and with our business community is what do we want that growth to look like? How do we shape it? How do we manage it? That's the work we're doing. We're investing in infrastructure. We're investing in public safety. We're making sure that we preserve our local history so that new people, as they come in, we're shining a light on it and making them understand why Wise County is so great, why we love it, where we came from, and why they should love it too and not want to change it. Because if we don't do that, those folks are still going to move in. And if we're not talking to them about what Wise County is, they're not going to know it. And so that's the work that I do as Wise County Judge. It's a great honor every day. And I'd love to continue that work with you and for you for another four years. And I'm asking for your support and your vote for County Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.